Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm Kelly Humphreys uh, and this is Shannon Walker, an astronaut and a uh, veteran of a long duration space flight on the International Space Station and uh, also a uh, expert in what it takes to get ready and land a Soyuz spacecraft. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you. It's good to be here, Kelly. It's wonderful to have you here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the crew has been doing in the week or so leading up here and uh, you might even throw in uh, what the extra work of doing a spacewalk in the middle of all that was like, probably. Yeah, um, leading up to um, an undocking, basically the crew has to get the cargo ready to go that is going to be packed on the Soyuz. And since the Soyuz descent module is so small, there's not a lot of room for cargo, so they have to pack it very carefully. So on the uh, the U.S. side, and with uh, Chris Cassidy and, and Tom Marshburn and um, Chris Hatfield, they've gathered up the U.S. cargo that needs to be packed up, packaged it carefully, given it off to the Russians, who will then pack it into the Soyuz underneath the seats and in a few nooks and crannies getting ready to go. So having an EVA come in the middle of your last-minute packing uh, kind of makes, makes the schedule a little bit more compact and a little bit, little bit more busy. Well, and Chris mentioned in uh, one of the daily planning conferences that Ramon was off doing most of that while they were doing the spacewalk. Uh, does that logistically make a lot of sense? Yeah, it does. Luckily, when uh, we do our, our spacewalks, the entire space station is open, and so Ramon has access to anything on the U.S. side that he might need to uh, pack at the end. And if we've done our homework right, we've got everything ready to go days ahead of time, uh, ahead of the undock. But sometimes last-minute items come up. For example, probably today, Day, there's probably some last-minute science samples that were taken that need to be packaged and packed and, and sent down on the soil. So there is some last-minute packing that happens just to make sure that the, the science isn't, um, well, it remains at the proper temperature on the way home. Yeah, I believe they were bringing back some Japanese protein crystal growth samples this time around. Well, so tell us a little bit about uh, what it's like to get ready in terms of inside uh, the uh, Soyuz. It's a fairly cramped area, and I think we've got some images that will help you describe that. Okay, yeah, this is a, a picture that you see of the Soyuz descent module. So this is the actual place that the crew sits all the way down coming home. When they first get into the Soyuz before, oh, look, there's some good pictures of the Soyuz seats where the where the crew will be sitting. You can see they're kind of small and your knees are up close to your chest. It's not like sitting in, a, in an airplane by any stretch of the imagination. But when the crew gets in, they will then put on uh, what's termed their Sokol suits. These are the pressurization suits that the crew wears. And they will get into their seats. These are the panels. This is the instrumentation that the, the crew sees on the way home, and so they will go through checks and make sure that all the systems of the Soyuz are working properly. There's valves to be configured and, and um, all kinds of, of checks. Obviously, you want all your systems to work properly, so they go through some pretty detailed checks to making sure everything is, is ready to go, and at the appropriate time, they will push the button to unhook uh, the Soyuz from the space station. This is a good view of what the commander has uh, right in front of him, the Soyuz commander. He has a periscope where he can see um, activity outside. That is the hatch, actually, that is above the crew that goes into what's called the orbital compartment. And the orbital compartment is when, on the way up, they have lots of cargo in there, and on the way down, there are things that are not going to make it back to Earth because the orbital compartment will separate from the descent module and burn up into the atmosphere. So it's a chance to get rid of some things that you may not need, such as... Um, uh, you know, like some hygiene items that you might have used on the station that you're not using anymore, and then uh, some of the clothes that you actually wear into the Soyuz. Okay. Um, well, now you were a member of the Expedition 24, 25 crew. That's correct. How long did you spend on orbit? I was there almost six months. Okay. Uh, I imagine it's got to be a little bit bittersweet getting ready to come home? Yes, of course it is. I mean, you've had a very busy time on orbit. Um, it is a fantastic place to live and work, and um, it is it is sad uh, leaving because uh, for a lot of people, you don't know if or when you might be able to go back to that wonderful laboratory that we have in the sky. Well, and, and you're also getting ready to come back to gravity yes. after not having had any for yes. quite some time, six months in your case. Uh, we've got some uh, animation that shows the process. Maybe you could walk us through that and, and maybe give us a little insight about what it's feeling like <laughs> sure. on the inside of the Soyuz sure. as it's coming Absolutely. down. Absolutely. I would love to. So, of course, the first thing that happens is the Soyuz undocks from the station. It is actually pushed away by some springs. Uh, about 15 seconds or so, well, actually a couple minutes. I I'm, I'm, uh, misspoke there. A couple minutes after it gets away from the station, it fires some jets and backs further away. Um, it 
goes around the Earth about one time, and then it will fire its main engine on the, the Soyuz spacecraft to slow it down to bring it back into the atmosphere. That engine burn is about four and a half minutes long. Um, about 20, 30 minutes after that, the compartments separate. So there goes the orbital compartment, there goes your main engine, you don't need it anymore. And the, sp uh, the descent module is on its own, and it starts coming through the atmosphere. Now this is where it gets pretty exciting, right? It gets very hot on the inside of the Soyuz, the outside is heating up. Um, it's a pretty dynamic event. A little bit later, the uh, parachute um, comes out when you're about 35,000 feet in the sky, so you're up where the airplanes are flying. Uh, the parachute comes out. That's another really dynamic event. It's a lot of bouncing and jerking around. And about 15 minutes after that, you will actually uh, land on the ground in Kazakhstan. And so do you actually start feeling gravity while you're in the descent sequence before you actually hit the Earth? Uh, you do, absolutely. Once you start into uh, the atmosphere, when you can see things start heating up, you can feel yourself being pulled down into your seat a little bit more. And at that point, you really want to tighten your, your straps. You've got shoulder harnesses, you've got straps on your knees and uh, like a, a waist belt to make sure that you are tightly um, tightly affixed to your seat so when you do hit the ground that you're not going to bounce out and hurt yourself. So it, with the increasing gravity, you have more opportunity to tighten your straps and, and make sure everything is safe. Is it a good feeling coming back and feeling <laughs> gravity again, or is it, or is it not good? It's. I would say it's kind of strange. I wouldn't put it in a good or not good. It just. It's very different because you haven't felt it for, for six months, and so it's just a very unusual sensation to have again on your body. And then after you, you of course have have the, those those. Uh, uh, Earth-facing rockets have fired and softened uh, the blow. You land, uh, the uh, recovery team show up. You're pretty much sitting there in the Soyuz waiting yes. for them to show up uh, and getting a chance to feel gravity even some more then. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the extrication process. Yeah, that's it's a very interesting how they uh, help you out of the Soyuz. There's basically two cases. You can have the Soyuz land upright, so you're actually sitting in your seats, laying on your backs like you would hope. You're so, sort of the normal normal configuration of the Soyuz, or a lot of times the Soyuz will bounce depending on the wind conditions and it'll roll over on its side. In that case, you can be anywhere. So you could be laying on your back, you could be hanging from your straps, and that in fact was my case, so I was kind of leaning forward on the low side of the Soyuz. And so in that case, the search and rescue crew has to roll the Soyuz to the proper orientation to help you out of the Soyuz. Um, and they do help you out. They don't want to have the crew hurt themselves getting out, so they, they take you out of the Soyuz. If it lands upright, then the crew has to be able to get out the hatch overhead, which is it takes a considerable amount of effort to do when you haven't dealt with gravity. It's just some motions that you haven't done in a while. Even though you exercise every day on orbit, it's still just something new to your body. And uh, but then of course you get uh, the smells of Earth. Yes, yes, and it, that is what it was was really neat. Um, the, a lot of people ask, what does the space station smell like? It doesn't really smell like anything. It's just kind of a neutral smell. It's, uh, there's, there's no special smell of the space station, but when you open the hatch in Kazakhstan and you can smell the grass and it smells very sweet, like flowers and perfume almost, even though it's just uh, grass out there in the steppes of Kazakhstan, it's uh, an amazing sensation and it's, it really lets you know that you're truly home on planet Earth. It's probably going to be springtime when these guys yeah, come so back. Yeah, so there might be flowers out there, too. So oh, it'll great, be real sweet. great. Well, any last words of advice for uh, Chris Hadfield or Tom Marshburn or Roman Marmenko as they're coming home? Well, as they're coming home, I would just say to them to truly enjoy the ride because it is kind of special. It, it is uh, pretty exciting, but um, it always, always goes according to plan. So enjoy it, and we will see them on the ground here very shortly. All right. Well, Shannon Walker, thank you so much for bringing your experience and expertise to Mission Control with us today and give people a peek on the inside of what's going to be happening later tonight when that three-person crew comes home. Thanks. Thank you.